Alright, welcome back. We've had some interesting experiences trying to feature this deck. I think this is my third or fourth time trying to get into a game and really show off what this deck is about. And it just hasn't been possible. Uh, last game, I'll give it to them. I got completely outplayed. The game before that, my game just crashed because NVIDIA GeForce drivers like updated or something. And it's just, it's been a mess. It's been a mess. But we'll get into it. This is on Ornbramian Soul. We can run through it real quick. So obviously we're gonna have Orn, Braum, and Aurelian Soul as our champion cards. We have two Brahms, three Orns, and one Aurelian Soul. And this deck is centered around making it to the late game as good as possible, um, and as strong as possible, so that we can play something like Aurelian Soul and just win the game. Because that's that's the whole point, right? Is that we want to get that really nice feeling of playing Aurelian Soul getting that level up and then just being able to destroy everything because we can play celestial cards for zero cost now the early to mid game is mainly going to be controlled as you can see here by more forge cards i know i do a lot of forge decks but it's because it's super strong and because there's a really cool thing between orn and brahm where if you put these nice forged equipment pieces on the brahm pretty early on he becomes a monster he becomes a 5 11 regenerating at the end of every turn monster that can challenge exact units that it wants to kill or block you know what i mean so brahm is very strong with orn orn is just really strong with forging and everything in general and then we have that aurelian soul in the back end for those games that go super long that we can just end up playing and just hopefully at in the end obliterating everything so i've had some pretty good success with this deck of course until as soon as i want to <laughs> feature how this deck goes but we'll hop right into it I will say it does struggle a decent amount against aggro decks. Um, there's a fair bit of spells that I threw into here, um, specifically Frostbite, because the whole thing is, oh my god, what is this? Okay, we're going to have to deal with some Frostbite as well. <laughs> uh, that's definitely going to be something that we will see. We always, If we get a combat cook, it's going to be one of the most important cards to have early on in the game, right? Now, the unfortunate thing is we always want to play the combat cook before the adept weaponsmith. So, we're going to really want to hope for some 2 and 3 cost cards. That actually works really well. So, in this case, we would turn 1 unscarred reaver. Yep. We won't take any damage here because it's an elusive unit. They're just going to get a free damage off. I wonder, is this like a Poro with like a mix of Freljord champions deck? This is interesting. I, I, I don't know what their game plan is here. But then this turn, okay, we got flash freeze. We'll just play the Weaponsmith's Apprentice. Jingle, did you wander off again? And then depending on what we put down, we'll literally just put this out to take damage. Not and ready. Okay, that's actually fine. So now we just don't attack. Gosh, that Frostbite's going to be really scary, though. Frostbite, especially with Ash, can be incredibly overwhelming. Because you just get to a point where none of your guys can attack, and it's really scary. And it's really difficult to deal with. Um, so. Uh, we'll pass. If we need, we'll frostbite an enemy. Okay, yeah. So here the plan is, we take the two damage, put you up against you, flash freeze so that you die. We get an extra plus three now. So we'll become, well, we'll technically be a 4-1 at the start of next turn. But they lose a strong early game unit. We now have a stronger early game unit that we have in play now. Nothing that can really take this guy down easily. But still, we'll play the combat cook. Um, here we'll go Pan of Pain, because we, we, want, we want survivability, right? Especially because this is an equipment we want to see go on Orn and or Braum. Now, Overwhelm could be really good to go on Orn and Braum. But, at that point, we're hoping the Ram's going to do its job with Overwhelm. Because typically, that's actually how you end up winning the game, is your, your Braum takes care of everything mid-game. It gets rid of all of the big mid-game threats from your opponent, which is why it's not that good against early game units, because early game aggro decks can get there before you can really set up Braum. But he takes care of the mid game so that Orn can just be there and ready once he gets out. Um, here, I don't think we'll attack. We'll just pass. Frostbite, go away. Go. 
works for me. We'll play the Adept Weaponsmith and the Mountain Goat. We won't put or er, Brom down yet, because we want to try and get as much forging on this combat cook as possible. Do one to an enemy. We could do this. But I think that's fine. Them having to waste the mana just to kill that unit to get the, what, three damage on my Nexus, possibly? Not even that now, because I can just block it. But this is like the, the beautiful trio of Forge, where you get the plus one, plus one Forge from each three of them, and out the gate, before we even defend here, plus five, plus three, which is technically a plus five, plus four with tough unit that can just take care of anything. Obviously, we'll block here, here. Uh, do we take the four damage here? I think no. I want to keep him alive so that we can get as much damage done to Brom early as possible. Just leave him there. And then we'll play our Mountain Goat. That's fine. See, next turn we'll start with six. So we'll play Brom. I won't play Orange Forge quite yet. We'll, do, we'll play Brom first. Force the Ice Veil Archer to an attack. And then whenever we do get some sort of damage on Brom, we can take care of this Daring Portal. It's not going to be a problem at that point. You have three mana. Do I think anything in your deck has the possibility of taking care of my Brom? I'm willing to run the risk that you don't. Otherwise, you will just kill this unit. Let's do that. I'm running a little bit of a gambit here. They do have three mana. Still. That is fine. That is fine. I would rather see that than so many other cards right now that could just take care of my Braum. But I won't have to worry about it. They're actually going to take care of their elusive unit for me. That's really fine. Yeah, we only take two damage because of the tough. You also now have a Poro ready to fight that's 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 one of the really good things about having brahm early um we don't need a gem just yet we can gem next turn possibly if we want to we can here's the crazy thing <laughs> we now have seven mana plus three mana in the bank right obviously that's only going to be used for a gem is this really what you want to do here man Oh, it is really what you want to do here. That's fine. You know why that's fine? Mm, there's two reasons why this could be fine. <laughs> um, I think I will just let you kill this guy. I think that's, that's all I'm going to do for right now. Just let you kill that guy. Now, you don't have anything to attack with. You're not threatening me in any way. So just let me get this equipment. Let me get my 9-7 Orn off on the board. And next turn, when we attack, he's going to get to level up. And then the turn afterwards, we're going to have this nasty ram that's just ready to do anything. That's going to do no damage. I don't know what they're thinking there. Not a very smart decision on their part. Um... There's no real point in playing gem here. I think at this point, they're just kind of throwing things down. Trying to do something to stop us. Because this is the train that is this deck. You get that combat cook down. You have Orin and Braum ready. Oh, you just... As long as they don't have, like, kill a unit card or whatever. Then you start to put yourself in a really good situation. That a lot of people cannot deal with. So, like here, we're gonna forge our own. We're gonna forge our Orn. Um, we're gonna play all of these guys. We are going to pull Trundle into our Brom. And then we can either Unforgiving Cold, we can Troll Chant, whatever, for this Trindamir. Um,. Um, actually, let's do this. Yeah, let's do this. 
plus two, minus two. So now he'll do the exact amount of damage that we want to do. Um, give two allies plus two, plus two. We give them the plus two, plus two. And then commit. Because now we've just got an insane amount of damage going on the board. They have to decide, what am I going to do with this? Also, this is really good. We want them to kill our combat cook. Because here's what happens if they kill our combat cook. This plus five, plus three with tough just goes on a Braum. He now becomes a 713 that regenerates with Challenger at the end of every round. It's super strong. It's so unbelievably strong. Actually, he's going to be plus one, plus one more and spawn a Poro every time he gets hit. So that's, a, that's another part of it. And our Orin levels up. So here you can see that, like, it's so overwhelming. And we're pretty much only in the mid game. Sure, we're on the turn where we're getting eight mana per turn now. But we've already leveled both Braum and Orin up. Plus, we've got still the combat cook is alive. They left it alive. Probably because of the threat of us putting that um, equipment down onto our Braum. Oh, here we go. Trundle's evol evolving. <laughs> Trundle's leveling up. Uh, what is what is Trundle's thing? Uh, attack, grab me plus one, plus zero for each A plus class card you behold. Which is going to be all two, at least, of you. So that means you're going to be a seven, nine. That's fine. Um, play you. We're going to forge our Braum. Because now, even though we do have Braum, they're not really allowing us to put the equipment down on them. So now our, our Braum is kind of our win con. And you know what's so beautiful about this? What is so amazing? Is that we can just do this. Like, we don't have to worry about them. They're doing zero damage this turn. Sure, Tritomir's gonna level up, right? It's fine. What are they gonna do about this Probably 1915. No, actually, this 2016 or yeah, they, they already know it's over. Like, it's at this point, there's not a ton that they can do. They, they're gonna they're gonna try and play what they can. But I mean, you see this mass that this is, and we still have an Aurelian Soul. We pull an Aurelian Soul next turn. Oh my goodness, it's gone. Because we almost just have 20 attack damage only from Orn. They could take out the entire, like, the entire rest of our cards. Just leave Orn and Aurelian Soul, and we still just win. <laughs> we'll forge Orn here. We'll get our favorite artisan down. Forge Orn again, and then he plus two, plus twos himself at the beginning of an attack. I, I really appreciate that this guy's going to let us do this. It is very nice of him. And then it's just, I, at that point, what really else can you do? You know what I mean? I mean, it's just, this mass is just going out. And then we've still got the ram. Like, the ram itself is going to do all the damage it needs. We're, we're threatening 55 damage right now. And sure, this is when maybe it was better to take Overwhelm than Barrier. But honestly, Barrier kept this combat cook alive for a long time. I don't think this combat cook would be alive right now. But I mean, there, there's really nothing they could do to stop us. They honestly did a fair amount. But they they truthfully just can't do enough. Yeah, <laughs> just as they say, you'll need more than that. Yeah. I think they, the lowest they can get it down to is 15. But GG's. This is the power of the, this isn't even the full power of this deck. This is just some of the power. This is really good power, but it's only some of the power of this deck. We still have a really soul in the back to just make waves if we needed to. Everything could die here. We could get him down to two and then pull a really soul and the game's still over. At that point, there's just not a ton you can do. But props to them for, for, for sticking it out. GG's. I think they were also testing a deck as well, so we kind of got a freebie there, in my opinion, but still. The power of Orn, Braum, and Aurelian Soul, especially because another thing is their their mana costs are so spread out, right? So many decks are like, 
uh, like like a Riven Zed deck, right? Is two and three cost champions, but Orn Brahmian Soul is four cost, seven cost, ten cost. So you have a clear path of who to play when. Obviously, you're never to get the perfect pulls, all that kind of thing. But it gives you an idea of what you're building towards. Like, okay, early game, I'm building towards Braum to keep him alive and become a, like a sustained unit. And then you know, a little bit later, you're now pivoting from Braum being a sustained unit to getting that equipment ready for Orn. And typically, you're trying to get the equipment ready from the beginning because you're also trying to get it for Braum. But you're getting that equipment ready for Orn to come in, take it over, and then just throw it all out on the board and then in the very end if you're still having issues and they've got some powerful units on the board that even Orn and Braun can't take care of you have Aurelian Soul in the back to just get laid down and do what he needs to do <laughs> and get everything done that way but very fun deck there's a lot that you can do with it I've, I've been experimenting uh, with Aurelian Soul a ton um, recently, and, I, and I've got some I've got some decks that I'm building, just like this dragon deck right here. I've got some some decks that I'm building that I'm excited to show you guys soon. So keep a watch. <laughs>